guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. I'm back here at Walker Ford in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We have something that many of you have been waiting for. This is the all new, first time ever, 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. But before we get into Ford's first ever EV to battle all the competition, especially from Tesla, let's talk about what's going on here. As of late, there's been a lot of discussion of electric vehicles progressing into the future. Lots of manufacturers, including Ford, have talked about changing their whole lineup to where they would not have any internal combustion engines, but go with full electric vehicle power. Now with this Mustang Mach-E, this is their first full foray into a plug-in electric vehicle. And if you think about it, they were kind of smart. They decided to take that Mustang name that has so much rich history and just recognition and they brought it to the Mach-E to help it get out there and maybe make it be that vehicle that people want to park in their garage when it comes to EVs. Now what's interesting they decided to take a route of a crossover SUV rather than a sports car or a truck and this really shows the direction that Ford is continuing to go in because remember not too long ago, they eliminated all their regular passenger cars. One thing is for certain, Ford is not messing around and they're bringing their A game when it comes to this very, very filled with competition and very challenging field of EV vehicles with this Mach-E. So let's go ahead, let's find out, is this Mach-E, is this the one to get over a Tesla or the other competition? And if you're wondering, well, which Tesla? Really, this one hones in on that Model Y. Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, you're gonna notice the styling. It is very unique, but it does have some of those Mustang touches to kind of bring in that recognition. Starting off at the front of the business, you're gonna have a very, very slim headlight housing. A Little bit of bright metallic silver. You can see the direction that they went in with the tri-bar setup of the daytime running lamp. So you have the LED, daytime running lamp with that tri bar set up. That's meant to be that Mustang cue to connect the two together. LED headlights, I do like the design. I think they went great with how they overall shape the headlight housing and the overall size of it. Now, as you come down, there's no reason for fake vents or anything like that. You're gonna get some flat black trim and a little bit of gloss black trim. This particular color is a premium optional color. It is a tri-coat. It's got a nice metallic pearlescent to this star light white, which is absolutely beautiful. Come across the center area where you would have a grill. There is no grill, but they did a great job kind of outlining where a grill would be with the gloss black. You do have a forward facing camera on this particular Mach-E. We have our Mustang badging, still not 100% how I feel about calling this a Mustang Mach-E. I like the name Mach-E really kind of fits into the, the whole Ford branding, NE standing for electricity or electric. But to me, it's, it's not a Mustang. So I, I am gonna zonk that, but it is a good looking badge. I'll tell you that much. Work your way down, you're gonna have some active shutters. And then you'll also notice how they integrated the lip right into the front fascia with a little bit of gloss black that goes all the way along the bottom, extends out nicely. One of the main things with electric vehicles, even more so than your standard internal combustion engine vehicle, are the aerodynamics to try to get this to cheat the air as much as possible. Now, when we get up on to the hood, of course, we're gonna have a front mounted trunk space, which I'll showcase that in a little bit. But you can see how the hood meets with that top portion of trim, and then you're gonna have two nice rises. I like the way they didn't just do a massive hood bulge, that kind of goes with the Mustang muscle car look. They kind of just brought up these two rises and then the way they did the fenders really nicely curved and done well to have that nice flow going towards the side of the vehicle. Now, as we come around the bend, what you're gonna notice on this particular Mach-E, they took the gloss black from the bottom, brought it around that fender treatment. I think it works perfectly with the white and then these wheels are specific to this trim. There's lots of different wheel options this is gonna be an optional 19 inch wheel, machined aluminum with the gloss black, 
It's got your Mustang Mach-E pony badge there. You do have regen braking, and I'm quite impressed with the size of the calipers up front. Look at the size of those calipers behind those 19-inch wheels. Wheels and tires, you're looking at 225 on the width, 55 series sidewall. My one concern, like we brought up on other reviews, I don't know how this gloss black is gonna wear over time, but definitely brand new sitting here at Walker Ford. It pops very nicely with the white that we have. Now, as we go down the side, super clean. You got gloss black on the mirror caps with your turn signals. We do have 360 degree cameras on here, which is nice, cameras all the way around. Very tasteful. I love what they've done with the mock e badge. So you, they kind of brought that classic mock one style to it, but added the E with the blue signifies that this is an EV and that X badging, very, very tasteful. The gloss black along the lower sill, you'll notice how it kind of curves up and then curves back down as you get towards the rear. Everything is rounded. One other thing I really want to showcase is on the side of the vehicle where the door handle is. There is an actual door handle. You literally have this little lip for the front door and you hit that button and then the door opens. It's magic. It's an electric door. Close it up, working your way towards the rear. I do like the way they have gloss black up top. This one does have an optional glass roof, which I'll show you once we get on the interior. But I think the black, like I said, works great with the white. Into the rear passenger door, the rear passenger door just has a single button and that allows you to open up the door. The button is located cleanly right back there. And I'm glad they didn't put that little lip because I would have killed just the overall flow of the design. Very small on the quarter window, but that's okay. And I love the way the rear pillar just comes into the back. Now this is where we get a little bit more of the Mustang overall design. I'm gonna have Lori kind of swing around and show how that rear fender kind of flares out just like on a current Mustang. They did that on purpose to bring in that style. I like the way they have a nice gloss black low roof spoiler. I wish that they would have tucked the wiper up underneath so we are gonna zonk that. And even though I still am struggling to call this a Mustang, they did one heck of a sexy job with the tri-bar taillights. Very unique. I love the folds and the bends. They're clear with the red LED lighting, which is very tasteful. There's your pony. We got one up front. We got to have a pony at the back end of the stable as well. And then as we drop all the way down to finish it off, super clean. No fake exhaust. Obviously, there is an exhaust on here but I'm glad they didn't try to simulate something, give it quad tip exhaust or something. But you do have your uh, reverse lights down low, really gonna help illuminate the area behind the vehicle. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the interior and talk some numbers on this new mach -E. All right, guys, we're in this star white, star bright, the first Mustang Mach-E I saw tonight. But no, just joking, I know I'm a poet and I didn't know it, but realistically, it's not nighttime, it's daytime, but I am in an actual Mach-E for the first time where we're gonna be going on throttle very, very soon. But I know you have some questions. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I could see where this is a competitor to the Model Y from Tesla, the Jaguar I-Pace, and the rest of the bunch of EV vehicles out there. But how much is this particular one? Now, remember, this is rear-wheel drive only, so single electric motor on this one. It's not all-wheel drive. MSRP for the way that this one is optioned is going to be $53,940. Now, remember, you do have a $7,500 tax credit that you get from the federal government for buying an EV. So you kind of need to take that into consideration. But let's take the other things into consideration. What are the options in this one, and what are we getting? So let's go to the door panels and check it out. What I love is the cleanliness of the door panel. What I mean by that is that there's not a bunch of crazy design there. It's real simplistic and I think it works. Nice, dark, soft touch material up top, little bit of silver trim, and then as you work into the midsection, that's where you pick up the gray. I'm digging the speaker cover, very unique speaker grill cover. We do have the 10 speaker B&O sound system in this particular one with the SYNC 4 setup. I love what they did with the armrest, the white contrast stitching. And then that door pocket there, super size for a foot long meatball sub with extra parm. And you have a little cubby in the back portion to put a few Milky Way and Butterfinger candy bars. Now, as we go from the door panel to the dash, 
Look at what they did here with the B&O sound system. That same style of speaker grill cover is gonna give you that nice clarity to the sound. You do have hard plastic up top and hard plastic in the middle. They brought some faux carbon fiber in here. I'm gonna zonk it. It really looks out of place in this Mustang Mach-E. I think of all the other materials out there, especially when we come to 21st century materials, not digging the, the faux carbon fiber, but I am digging the nice soft material here with the white contrast stitching, just like on the armrest. And then look at what we have taken center stage, super size. That is that optional 15 and a half inch infotainment system. It looks like it's taken right out of a Tesla product. They have that same vertical setup. It's kind of stuck to the dash in a really awkward way. I'm not digging it, to be honest with you because of just how it's kind of just plastered there with some double-sided tape, but it is really large. You do have navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and of course it's a full touchscreen. Hit the little Mach-E logo, that takes us into our different drive modes. Engage, Whisper, Unbridled. Let's talk about some of the power here. So this one has the 88 kilowatt per hour extended battery. So that means we go from a range of 230 miles all the way to 300 miles and if you're looking at horsepower when you go unbridled you're going 290 horsepower 317 pound feet of torque and it's real easy to switch from the different modes very very intuitive system i hit camera that's going to give us our forward facing camera nice wide angle we have our 360 up top you could also go ahead and change the different ways that it's displayed very easily I go ahead and throw it in reverse. There's our backup camera with trajectory, with the 360. It actually takes up a large room of the area on that infotainment system screen. So I'm very happy to say that. And like I said, very intuitive. You could go into your navigation. You go right back to our icons here. We could get our tire pressure. Everything kind of works well. And you do have the nice swipe features here at the bottom portion, which you could just hit that and bring it up that way. We do have dual climate. Everything is activated through the screen. We have heated seats, but no ventilated seats. And that's gonna be a zong for me for a $54,000 crossover SUV. You do have a heated steering wheel. You can see how they kind of worked in that volume knob with the power button, really clean. Work your way down underneath that. You have a USB-C, a USB wireless charging pad, and then you got enough space for two paydays and a small Snickers. But watch, check this out. They were very smart. The engineers were very smart with creating that bridge style of a center console area. So you could put a sack, a satchel, a bag, a purse, a purse, all sorts of goodies down below. Another thing you'll know about the Mach-E, you'll notice it's a flat floor. Because there's no drive shaft, it's totally flat in here. That gives you more space. You got two cup holders. I like the way they went flat black for when your drinks are sweating. It's not gonna get all over the pretty gloss black. Key fob, I'm struggling to say it, but there's the Mustang. Mustang Mach-E, I would have preferred this just be called the Mach-E, but that's just me spinning around. There's your buttons, but I get it. They're trying to use that Mustang name to help create excitement for this vehicle. You do have more of that beautiful white contrast stitching. I'm really digging what they did here with the material. And then of course, you're gonna have the rotary selector knob to go through the different gears, park, reverse, neutral, and drive. When you throw it in reverse, you are going to get a loud chirping, beeping sound from the back to alert people. And this is a single speed transmission. So there's no simulated gears. There's no gears whatsoever. It's a single speed transmission. Love the nice high armrest with the stitch work. I just wish it was a little softer. You could lift it up out of the way, open up this door, and then lo and behold, guess what? You could put your favorite Rubik's Cube that you used to use back in high school. Keep that in there for when you're bored or maybe when you're stuck in traffic or maybe when the battery dies and you're waiting for a charge. But 12 volt, easily placed. Here's one thing I wanna just show is that with the armrest up, you have another area where you could put a bag, like a five pound bag of red delicious apples. You could put that right there and have something to munch on. Seats, I love this ActiveX material. Super soft, the perforated, the stitching, the color really supports the body very nicely. Of course, you're gonna get full electric assist on the passenger and on the driver. And then you have this massive optional glass roof. My only zonk with it is that it does not have a sunshade and it does not open. It's just a glass roof. 
It does make everything open and airy. I wanna show you, coming back to the infotainment side of things, I wanna show you a couple different settings with this. So you have something called one pedal drive. By turning that on, the throttle also acts as the brake pedal. You release your foot off the throttle, it applies the brakes. This does have regen braking, and it's very easy to turn on and off. Of course, you could go into the different ambient lights, propulsion sound. You could have synthetic noise if you want, or you could go without the synthetic noise, and we will be showcasing all that in the drive. But overall, being six feet tall in here, it feels really spacious. I like the height of the dash. I like how much room I have up top, especially with the glass roof. But why don't you come over to the business end? I want to show you behind the wheel of this Mustang Mach-E. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel of this Mach-E. Let's talk about the door panels real quick. Look at how they did the work. Very interesting door handle to open up the door. Nice little touch like that. Of course, you get all your power uh, assist buttons here. And then you're going to have three memory seat settings for the driver's seat. Down below, you are welcome to a tasteful Mustang badge on the sill here with that Mach-E pony. And then, of course, you're going to get full electric seats for both sides, the driver and the passenger. Steering wheel. I love the thickness. Nice leather all the way around. A little bit of gloss black, and I'm digging the touch with the two-piece leather on the bottom. It kind of elevates the fit, feel, and finish. Horn button is a little bland, so I am going to zonk that. Whoever's doing their horn buttons at Ford, they need to update their game a little bit. They need to bring just a little bit extra style. Gloss black kind of blends in nicely, and then, of course, you have the Maki -E Mustang logo there. I'm going to go ahead and hit the power on button, and then you're greeted to a 10.2-inch digital display for the driver's side, which is wonderful. That's going to give you all the readouts, and remember, with this particular premium Mach-E, it has that 88 kilowatt per hour extended battery. That's gonna give us a range of up to 300 miles, zero to 60 in 6.5 seconds, MPGs 104 in the city, and 90 on the highway. I like the nice view that you get from the rise in the hood on each side. Seats are comfy. Let's get to the back seat and see how your passengers are gonna enjoy this electrifying drive in the Mach-E. All right, guys, back seat time, and quite impressive. There's some nice space back here, even with that low-slung roof line, and of course, being an EV with the batteries and the motor and the whole nine yards. Now, backs of the seats have that ActiveX material all the way around. Very, very durable. I like it. It seems like it'd be easy to clean. You have a decent-sized pocket. It's a little on the tight side. Maybe a couple double D batteries and some triple A's. That's about all that you're gonna be able to fit back there. You do have two AC vents, which is great, and a USB-C and a USB. So they got you covered connectivity-wise. I have my own little small pocket over here. I'm not gonna put any batteries. I'm gonna need something, something to recharge me. Uh, probably put three Twinkies in there and you don't have to worry about them getting smushed. The one thing I do love is you get plenty of headroom. Six feet tall still, plenty of headroom, even with the glass roof. My question is, on a bright Florida summer day, right in the middle of high noon where the sun is right over us, I don't know if you're gonna cook back here. That's the only big question mark that I have, but it definitely looks good. I can see a seagull right now flying overhead. What's going on? Armrest time, pull that down. It's still hard. I don't know why they can't give us some softer material, but the great news is it's at a good height, two cup holders, but why don't we go ahead because guess what? You have hands-free activation on that rear hatch. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. Obviously, there is a front mounted trunk area that I want to showcase. And obviously, a lot of times you hear the word frunk. So underneath the frunk, you're going to see this area, four different items. Now, this one has this very interesting divider. And if you notice, we got a box of Twinkies. This was actually left here by Ricky Sapien, one of our Radies Rise Patreon members, thank you, Ricky, for leaving these Twinkies in here so we could showcase what the room is like. But this divider actually could be removed. You could put one carry-on in the front area, plus you got the rest of the cargo area in the back. And this is one of the pluses, and not all EV vehicles do this. It's nice to see Ford really think it through when it comes to storage space to get this done. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the rear cargo area and see the space that we have in the back. All right, guys, obviously with this being a crossover 
SUV of an electric vehicle. And then going up against the Model Y, remember the Tesla Model Y, we're gonna see what kind of space we have. Real simple, you hit the button, nice electric assist, actually goes up fairly quickly. When you get to the interior, I'm really digging the amount of room. Now, if you want some hard numbers, let me go ahead and give you some hard numbers. With the rear seats up, you're looking at 29.7 cubic feet of space. Fold the rear seats down, that gives you almost 60 cubic feet of space. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, how much is underneath that front mounted trunk area? That's 4.7 cubic feet of space. Now, what I like is how wide the area is and also how tall, even with that sexy low sloping roof line into the rear hatch area. And if you're wondering, well, how do you get the seats down? It's actually quite simple. You're just gonna push this button and then that's gonna allow you to just flop it on down. I'm gonna flip to the other side here. We're gonna push the button, flop it on down. You do have some very nice lighting and you'll notice they actually put the Mustang Mach-E logo there. It's the little touches that kind of add up to the big picture. We do also have a 12 volt, which is conveniently placed and that all weather protection. There's even enough room to drop a box of Twinkies back here real easy for that trip. But why don't we go ahead, speaking of trip, if you're ready, I'm definitely ready. I think this Mach-E is ready. Let's go ahead and go on throttle in this new Ford electric vehicle. All right guys, we're in this 2021 Mustang Mach-E premium, rear wheel drive only. And of course, there's many different ways you could trim out your Mach-E. They got the GT, uh, which is higher, obviously higher up the food chain. You can get it with all-wheel drive, and that's definitely gonna give you sub five second zero to 60. But right away, driving the vehicle, I actually think it drives quite normal. Uh, I mean, with some of the sound that is synthetically being produced, it, it feels, like a regular vehicle but boy oh boy when you go on throttle that's where you get that instant torque now getting into the system to adjust what mode you're in is, is simple like i showed you earlier we're going to keep it in unbridled and i have it with the propulsion sound on but what you're going to instantly notice is the instant torque from this ev you're not waiting for revs to uh to get to a certain area no turbos, no superchargers, nothing, just uh, electricity. But here we go, on throttle. Whoa. <laughs> so you can still have a little bit of fun in your EV for sure, especially rear wheel drive. But I'm telling you right now, even though this is not the full performance oriented GT model, it feels quicker by sitting in the vehicle than it does on, say on paper which is nice. Uh, it's obviously very quiet. Even with the propulsion sound, it's not something so in your face. And from what I understand with the GT, there is more of a traditional Mustang V8 sound that can be produced if that's what you want. But visibility is actually quite excellent in this. Even out that back smallish window still you got plenty of clear sight. The side mirrors are wonderful. Let me go ahead. I'm going to stop here. We're going to do a on throttle from a dead stop. On throttle. So like I was saying, definitely from a dead stop, zero to 60 is 6.5 seconds. We need to get, and we will be getting a GT, uh, especially with all wheel drive to show you the acceleration in that, but really the driving dynamics is nice. When you go into unbridled, it does uh, bring some nice weight to the steering. And you can really feel like when you get off throttle, you can feel that regen braking taking place. I like having the 10 inch digital display because it makes it feel a little bit more familiar to a regular traditional internal combustion engine vehicle layout rather than having the minimalistic approach of Tesla. I just think that that is something that doesn't sit well with me is that minimalistic approach with nothing in front of you. So I, I do applaud Ford for having that information. The screen size is large. So if you, if you like a large screen size, you're not going to be disappointed. It's just for me, it's pretty big, man. And it's like just attached to the dash in a very awkward way. But 
like I said, it's one of those things that for every 10 people that don't like it, you find 10 people that love it. And that's just one of the things, but fairly quiet in the cabin. I am noticing some, some wind noise um, coming in from the, from the side glass. But other than that, nothing too crazy. Brakes feel great. Stop on a dime. Give everybody a little bit of lithium. Lithium battery, that is. And then uh, pulling out. On throttle, here we go. Let's try this again. Notice that sound on the brakes. Brakes feel phenomenal. Feel the back. Do you want to come out just a little bit? Help square off that corner. Super smooth. The seats are comfy and supportive. There we go. It does put a smile on your face. It's very interesting, unique driving experience because of that instant torque. I think that's what just makes it stand out from the rest. I love seeing out over the hood. You get great visual reference points in here, which is also an important uh, thing. I just, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm missing a V8 right about now, but uh, that's not the purpose of this vehicle. On throttle, here we go. I'm, I'm actually excited that we got the rear wheel drive version first. This way, when I drive the dual motor setup with all wheel drive, we'll be able to uh, see the difference on how those uh, compare. I'll go ahead, let me um, let me shut off the propulsion sound. So there it is, now it's quiet. That's what you got when you go on throttle like that, that's what you're getting without that propulsion sound. I'll turn it back on. <laughs> quite interesting how it does that, but it is nice for those who want that sound. And you know me, I'm all about sound even though it is a synthetic sound, is as a replacement for a Shelby GT350. Um, no, I mean, who are, we, who are we kidding? That's why I say, just call this the Mach-E. It doesn't need to be a Mustang. Just call it a Mach-E, that's cool. But back again, on throttle, here we go. Brakes feel great, I love the brakes in this thing. And the throttle is not sensitive, which is great. It really has a nice progressive feel that as you apply more throttle, it makes it behave as if it was an internal combustion engine. So it's not like an on-off switch where you're just like herky-jerky all over the place. All right, guys, it's been another great day here at Walker Ford. I definitely gotta thank Frank Walker, Weston Walker, Tracy, Mark, Austin, Greg, the whole crew, so accommodating to get us their very first Maki to bring to you here on Rady's Rides. It's interesting. EVs, this is the direction that we're going in. I think with this Maki, or like many are calling it, including for the Mustang Maki, there's a lot of variety there when it comes to overall power, when it comes to the style, and also the interior and driving experience. I think you would have to be crazy if you're looking for an EV not to add this to your test drive list. And I think that in the end, these other brands, especially Tesla, they're dealing with Ford. And we all know Ford has a lot of that history of getting things done. Interesting to see where this Mach-E will take them into the future, but very interesting experience. If you want to keep seeing EVs on Rady's Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, there's two ways you could do it. Click the first link, become a Radies Rides Patreon member, or click the second link and get yourself some Radies Rides merch. Got to give it up to the queen of the EV camera. My wonderful videographer, Lori, working that electric camera like a champ getting the angles of this electric vehicle, show her some love, electrify her life with some wonderful comments in that comment section. Laura, you definitely electrify my life and thank you for all your hard work. And just like always guys, I'll see you on the next ride.